It is November 16, 1776, and the brigantine, firing her cannons in the traditional salute, approaches the town of Aranjastad St. Eustatius. This is no ordinary ship. It is the Andrew Doria, one of the first four vessels of the new Continental Navy of the country emerging as the United States of America, a country still battling in the early stages of the American Revolution. And St. Eustatius is no ordinary island. Although a tiny speck in the Eastern Caribbean, it has become one of the major trading centers in the world, a bustling Dutch free port, hosting over 3,400 ships per year from Europe, Africa, and the Americas. The town of Oranjestad, boasting a total population of nearly 10,000, is crammed with 600 warehouses in its lower town along the harbor. The citizens wait expectantly to see if officials in Fort Oranja will return the salute from the Andrew Doria. The Continental Congress in Philadelphia sees official contact with St. Eustatius as critical to its war and political efforts. The warehouses in Oranjestad contain the weapons, ammunition, gunpowder, and other supplies necessary to fight the British, and official recognition of the emerging United States of America by the Netherlands would represent a huge political victory. There is no mistaking the identity or purpose of the Andrew Doria because it proudly flies the new flag of the Continental Congress, the Grand Union flag of the newly independent 13 colonies. Officials in Fort Orania consult with the island's governor, Johannes de Graaf, who makes the momentous decision to return the ship's salute by firing the cannons of Fort Orania, the salute heard around the world. This is the first official recognition by a foreign power of a ship representing the United States, a key moment in the new nation's struggle for political independence. It also leads to the trade so desperately required by the Continental Congress, and St. Eustatius becomes the major source of arms, ammunition, and gunpowder for the Americans. Many argue that the revolution would have been unsuccessful without the pivotal role played by St. Eustatius. Oranjestad's merchants from the Netherlands, France, Spain, Portugal, Denmark, and even Britain provide the trade goods from Europe that the Americans could not access directly. The Andrew Doria is carrying a very special gift for the governor of St. Eustatius, a copy of America's new Declaration of Independence. Nothing could better mark the significance of the Andrew Doria's mission in St. Eustatius, nor better connect the Dutch authorities with the courageous and proud fathers of the new nation. Today, St. Eustatius is a quiet reflection of its former glory as a major world trading center. The wonderful volcanic peak still dominates the skyline, but the population is closer to 3,000 than the 10,000 of 1776. The Dutch island of Statia is one of a cluster of islands in the Northeast Caribbean whose economies are now dominated by tourism. Seba, St. Martin, St. Bart, St. Kitts and Nevis are nearby neighbors. Visitors to Statia enjoy superb scuba diving, outstanding nature trails, a congenial population, and a very important sense of the island's history. The modern city of Aranjestad contains many historic remnants from the architecture of the past, although the warehouses of the lower town have vanished except for crumbling foundations. Fort Orania has been carefully restored, primarily through Dutch-American collaboration. It continues to provide a spectacular view of the former lower town, now empty except for the skeletons of former warehouses. A walk along the beautiful shores of the former warehouse district provides a nostalgic reminder of the past, although we hear only the sounds of waves instead of the hustle and bustle of commercial life. Here Dr. Grant Gilmore, director of the St. Eustatius Center for Archaeological Research, works with local high school students to unearth evidence of the city's past. The young people learn the techniques of modern archaeological research and are thrilled when they find the floor of an old warehouse, perhaps a warehouse that contained trade goods for the Americans of 1776. The most glorious event in the history of St. Eustatius and one of the major events binding the United States with the Netherlands was the salute to the Andrew Doria on November 16, 1776. Plans are now afoot to rebuild the brigantine Andrew Doria and to sail the ship once again. The reconstructed Andrew Doria will provide a perfect commemoration of America's huge debt to the Netherlands 
and to the historic courage and commerce of St. Eustatius. Americans have, for decades, commemorated their historic ties with St. Eustatius through special plaques and events. Reconstruction of the Andrew Doria will become the best possible form of that commemoration. With the full backing of the island government through the office of the Governor of St. Eustatius, Governor Hayden Giddens, the St. Eustatius Center for Archaeological Research will facilitate the recreation of an authentic replica of the original brigantine. Actual construction of the ship will be directed by Master Shipwright Alan C. Rawl, who has unparalleled experience in reconstructing historic vessels. He is seen here, along with his wife Elizabeth, discussing plans for the new ship with Dr. Grant Gilmore. We hear the words of Alan Rawl as we view pictures of his previous triumphs in historic ship reconstruction. And, uh, we're interested in uh, not only the building of the vessel, but the, uh, the historic aspect of the vessel and the research in that department, the uh, design and management of the project itself, and of course the construction, but also the sailing of the vessel uh, subsequently after the construction is completed and uh, mustering a crew, a good captain and crew, and uh, sort of encouraging the owners to uh, establish um, a proper maintenance and operation program to make sure the vessel is well taken care of after we finish it, because the construction of the vessel is really just the beginning. It's important later on when you're maintaining and operating the vessel that the, that the people who own it are really, they more than just own it, they are part of the book, part of it. The St. Eustatius Center for Archaeological Research will undertake investigations to ensure that the new Andrew Doria accurately reflects the construction of the original ship. Then, bearing in mind Alan Rawls concerns for proper design, construction, maintenance and community involvement, the Andrew Doria will return. Part of the effort to reconstruct an authentic replica of the Andrew Doria begins with a search for the ship's remains. The search for the archaeological evidence will concentrate on two locations on the Delaware River, where the Americans scuttled the ship in November 1777 to avoid its capture by the approaching British. Dr. Gilmore intends to locate the wood and other artifacts by excavating the site after constructing a coffer dam. Then Alan Rawl will have the evidence required to build the best possible replica ship. So part of, the, part of our responsibility, I'll say, is to um, make sure it, it'll happen properly all the way through and not just start for the sake of starting but that it's, it's a viable uh, project and there's everyone assumes their role as a uh, responsible participant to make sure that it happens just do it right the first time. And with that commitment the Andrew Doria will sail again.